Good morning, Reefers. I'm Daniel. This is Coralus, and today I'm telling you a few things that you're going to need when purchasing a new aquarium. Most companies seem to forget these things and they don't include them uh, for several reasons. They want to leave it up to you and what you're going to do with the system. But just as a heads up, if you're a new hobbyist and you don't know what you should purchase, I'm going to go over a quick list of things that you're going to need. So even if you purchased a Red Sea, or a water box or any of these systems uh, with the very few all-in-ones that actually have everything you're gonna need to get running like the bio cube and some of the innovative marine tanks. Most of these do not come with return pumps so that's number one. If you're buying a tank now I know depending on your filtration and the reef and what you want turnover rate is gonna be different so I like to rely on my wave makers more than my return pump for flow so I don't really care as much about having a large pump but it's nice to have controllability like this DC pump over here so one of the cool things other than the fact that that is red and it matches the red sea and the bio pellets um, that pump in the bottom that return pump is controllable so I can dial it up and dial it down and I can even put it in a pulse mode if I want to so that's a pretty cool return pump uh, a lot of different return pumps are, like I said, just one speed. So here's a good one, very strong pump. You kind of plug it in, you set it and forget, and it just goes. So that's that's an option to think about. Uh, another another thing is heaters. Most aquariums do not come with a heater, so it's something you're going to want to purchase. If you have a controller box, something like a Neptune Apex, and your heater's tuned in, and you've got a temperature probe, and automatically it's controlled that's a great feature but for the most part you're probably just going to want a plug-in heater something that you can set the temperature and forget it and pretty much all of these are capable of that you can dial in the temperature and depending on how many watts you need for how many gallons you have um, you can choose one of those heaters so something else to think about I recommend having two heaters just in case one breaks you always have a backup so your tank just doesn't crash and get completely freezing so that's something to think about um, and also another thing these tanks the Red Sea will come with an auto top off system which is kind of like a gravity float system which is pretty cool and I do like that that's this box over here so quiet that down so the Red Sea box did you fill this up and we have a light on here so you can see a little algae in the bottom but this is basically RODI water, and there's a float back in there, and that float, if you can see it right there, as the water level drops, uh, that allows water to top off itself. So it's a very cool all-in-one system. I do like the tank in there. It's, it's a nice feature. There's no mechanical uh, electrical parts needed for that. It's just a float and gravity. So other systems, ATOs, are really important. If you just have a sump like the Bashi over here and you're gonna need some kind of system to auto top off, otherwise when this gets low, you're gonna be in trouble because you need to add water to an aquarium. I can't tell you how many people come in here, they get an aquarium and they don't realize you have to add water um, over time. So they think that you can just fill it up once and then you never have to mess with it again. So owning an aquarium is pretty hands-on. There's a lot of stuff that you have to do and it's just good to know your own equipment so you can be a little more informed. Um, so an auto top off system, a heater and a return pump is what we have so far. And something else that I would go for and talk about is sand and rock. So there's a lot of sand and a lot of rock options. I like to go with dry sand or dry rock unless you're getting um, the Carib Sea Live uh, because I like to add my own bacteria. So this is all the Marco rock very porous very lightweight and it's great for stacking uh, pretty much one of my favorite rocks so far to deal with so those are one of the things you have to think about and the sand up front like I said we just put some black sand in here you can see we were a little thin so we topped it off some black sand and I can't wait to see how that looks when it mixes in over time so we have a little variations in all the tanks around here from the fresh water. We have a lot of different gravels and sands available. But for salt water, for the most part, I would get something that's just a little bit coarse 
so it doesn't blow around like crazy. Something a little fine. If you're doing a smaller tank, it's not so bad, but if you have strong pumps and you're trying to move water in a big aquarium, the sand can get lifted up. So I go with something a little bit heavier grain like this. So this is the Carib Sea Live sand, and that's a great, great addition to any reef aquarium starting out. So, like I said, when you buy an aquarium, these things aren't included. You have to think about your salt water, what kind of salt are you using, what kind of bacteria you're adding, and all these things come into play. So, when you're picking up rock, be careful where you get it. Some rock does have Aptasia, may have pest on it, different things that you don't want to have. So, it may be established and full of bacteria, but you may be getting other things with it as well. That's why I tend to just use the dry rock and then add in the own bacteria. So, that makes it a lot cooler and a lot easier and you don't have to worry about getting some crazy pest. So there it is, C is a great brand by Aquavitro. Um, works every time, so you can't go wrong with that. And something else that they don't add with your aquariums are lighting. So we have a lot of different lighting options and depending on what you're doing with your aquarium, um, it's probably why they don't offer lighting with them for the most part, except for Red Sea now does. So you have the option with the Prime. They're a little bit smaller lighting, but they come with the Wi-Fi, and then you have something gigantic like these XR30s. So the only other thing is filtration, depending on what your aquarium is. If you have a hang in the back, I didn't show you guys the canister filter, but here's a canister filter option. So replacement filter pads, carbon, GFO, different types of media, are recommended to have on hand so you definitely definitely want to look at your equipment look what you're getting into and kind of think about it so you have all the stuff that you need ahead of time and you're not getting into any jams by running out so there you guys go with my quick update as always thanks for watching happy reefing please leave your question or comments below and i'll get back to you if you need me to make a video on something for you guys just ask and i can um, answer your questions